Okay, welcome everyone once again. My name is Gijsbert Janssen van Doren. Um, I am a technology evangelist for Zerdo. And today we're going to talk about building a resilient foundation for digital transformation. Um, I'll take, quickly take you to the agenda for today. We're going to talk about the causes and benefits of digital transformation. What are some of the barriers to implement or to do digital transformation in your organization? We're going to take a look at the dangers of getting left behind. And we're going to take a look at IT resilience and how that can give you the confidence to embrace the change to actually make digital transformation happen within your organization. Now, the reason why we're talking about digital transformation is, is quite clear if you look at Forrester that by the end of 2017, almost two thirds of the CEOs of the two, top 2,000 global companies will have put in place a digital transformation strategy and it will be at the center of their corporate strategy. Now, when we take a look at what digital transformation is, digital transformation is about the evolution of people and technology. As technology has evolved, the way that people interact with it has also changed and as a consequence, so have the expectations of what people expect from businesses. Um, I mean, both in terms of performance, particularly speed, but also in ease of interaction. Now, this has in turn led to opportunities for new business to actually um, leverage those digital technologies to better facilitate the customer experience. And at the same time, as we'll see later in this uh, presentation, this also creates challenges for any established organizations that have a more traditional mode of doing business. Now, it's really important that as you embark upon a digital transformation journey, that it's really important to remember that it must be broken down into smaller steps as part of a larger plan. Because having the ability to step back and reevaluate any changes as they happen is really crucial. And regardless for the reason of, of why you're doing this digital transformation project. Now, let's quickly step back and take a look at the three main reasons why businesses are actually going through these kind of transformations. Perhaps the most blatant reason to actually transform is to survive. Um, as we mentioned, technology has opened up new opportunities and has driven a shift in the competitive landscape. As newer businesses are leveraging digital technologies and disrupting established markets, traditional businesses must simply trans transform to perish. Um, and we can actually see this as, as we look at research from IDC, because IDC states that one third of the top 20 forms in industry segments will be disrupted by new competitors within five years. Um, so that's quite a bold statement. Now, more proactive businesses look to transform for profit. Um, as these business models have evolved, thanks to digital technology, IT is no longer seen as a cost center but actually as a driver of innovation and opportunity. The chance to drive revenue, um, our, our global president of sales always says up and to the right, and this is definitely where they want to thrive that revenue as well. It means that many organizations will lean heavily on their IT to actually facilitate this. Now, the profitability of digital transformation has been proven in research as well, and, and has been conducted by the uh, MIT Center for Digital Business. And that actually shows that companies that embrace the digital transformation are 26% more profitable than their average industry competitors. And they also have a 12% higher market valuation. Now, this is really self-explanatory. It really shows that it can be very profitable to adopt digital transformation. Now, the most forward-thinking companies and, and businesses, they really understand that digital transformation is a continuum. And as such, they do not only plan for today, but they, only, they also plan for tomorrow by ensuring that IT is agile enough to respond to any change as fast as possible. And, and being agile enables organizations to be proactive in transformation and essentially beat the competition to it. Um, subsequently, maximizing the benefits of innovation as well. And as, as reported by Forbes, we have seen more and more businesses adopt this, this future-proof mentality over the last year. Um, 
I think this, again, really self-explanatory what this says, the faster your organization can go from idea to implementation, the more it can embrace opportunities to transform and even disrupt market, markets and internal business models. Now, as this example of, of financial services industry shows that established businesses are struggling to evolve and keep up with the demands of their customers. And and their bands of the customers and the threats of competition. Smaller challengers are proven to have both lower cost to income and return on equity ratios than both their larger competitors and the biggest players in their industry. Now, the, the question is, why is it that these well-established, recognized brands are suddenly having such a problem to remain competitive? This has to do with a lot of the barriers inside an organization. They have complex IT organizations. They have, they're, they're using complex products, lots of legacy solutions. They have costly real estate, whether it's to provide services or to run their actual business. I mean, compare a large retail chain with an online shop, there's, there's, there's a lot of costly real estate involved there. A lot of manual operations where you can see more modern organizations and businesses um, outsource a lot of the manual um, operations like shipment or, or even payment. Um, you see that the larger organizations struggle a little bit with that to actually do it. Um, and of course, there's legacy compliance as well that um, um, they have to do a lot of regulations. There's a lot of regulations they have to um, um, attend to, they, they'll have to make sure that they still are compliant and that causes them to see barriers and, and to not being able to embrace that digital transformation. Now, failure to overcome these barriers does not only hinder transformation, it can actually leave these businesses so far behind the curve of modern technology that it's also that it also drastically increases the overall exposure to disruptive events. Now, in the digital age, we rely more and more heavily upon IT systems to deliver services that both our users and our consumers use, and, and maybe we've taken them for granted. But building modern services on top of legacy infrastructures make them far more susceptible to any disruption. I mean, many le legacy technologies simply weren't designed to support digital business in initiatives and, and consequently struggle to support them or even break under load. Now this is a real problem that affects all industries in, in equal proportion, although as we can see the cost of downtime can be far higher in certain industries. There are no single vertical is any more or less susceptible to, to the risks of failing to transform legacy IT. Um, as you can see in, in the, um, the chart right here, financial services, which of course makes sense, is the, the, um, the most susceptible to disruption. Um, and if you do suffer from, uh, from disruption, it, it's not something you can hide. Uh, and, and in this respect, digital technologies can work against the business as information is far more readily available and easily shared by any disgruntled customers. We've got Twitter, we've got all kinds of social media, and it seems that the barrier to actually share those kind of things on those type of media is a lot lower um, because of the more anonymous type of uh, um, communication. Now let's look at a couple of examples of these kind of disruptions. Um, let's start with WannaCry, the WannaCry ransom outbreak in, in May 2017. That affected over 300,000 computers in 150 countries in 24 hours. Um, it's a vicious evolution of ransomware Trojans utilizing the eternal blue exploit, and that supposedly was developed by the NSA. This enabled the virus to actually self-propagate across all network connected devices. Now, the, the NHS, the, the National Health Service in the UK was actually particularly badly hit with hospitals and GP surger surgeries across more than 60 trusts that they were all badly affected. And this resulted in delayed, canceled operations in many areas and, and digital records were actually unavailable. Staff was forced to attempt manual paper-driven processes instead. You can see what kind of impact this kind of disruption has on an organization. 
it's not only healthcare. Um, when we look at the British Airways outage in, in also in May 2017, I mean, it was at the start of a bank holiday weekend in May, um, they suffered from a catastrophic global IT failure, which resulted in the cancellation of hundreds of flights and disrupted travel for over 75,000 customers around the world. Um, there were various reports of what happened, but it would appear that the issue began with an engineer managed to unplug the power for the primary data center. Now, this is the typical human error type of uh, situation. Uh, and when this happened, the legacy infrastructure in place started to fall apart. Um, despite having mirrored environments in the secondary data center located almost about a mile away from the primary BA data center, they were unable to bring up all the applications. Um, and because they were using outdated technologies and, and services and they had highly complex infrastructure, it, it actually lasted for a couple of days um, at a staggering cost, of course. If you look at um, BA's half-year statement, they revealed the cost of this outage as 58 million pounds or 4% of the, an, uh, the annual revenue in 2016. So as you can see, quite quite the financial impact as well. Um, another example, HSBC, they had multiple outages in 2017 um, and that affected both business and personal banking. So many users reported being unable to access their accounts, mm, to make payments or even withdraw cash from ATMs. You, you can imagine that the customers were really quickly to take social media and, and let the business know just how much they disapproved of those problems. Um, it has quite the impact and it went really, it went almost viral across Twitter. Now, given how quickly knowledge of disruption can spread nowadays, a proactive attitude is, is more essential than ever. And, and this is why we at, at Zerto right now believe that successful transformation requires IT resilience. So if you take a look at resilience, what kind of impact does this have on um, digital transformation. Um, it's the, the resilience, if you take a look, close look at resilience, is the capacity of a system or enterprise or person to maintain its core purpose and integrity in face of dramatically changed circumstances. So, so let's dive into how we can build a resilient foundations for digital transformation. We'll start with the freedom to transform. Because the nature of our products, we're completely technology agnostic. We can go from any to any type of storage device. We can make sure that you can simplify and standardize your environment. You can innovate in your data center again. You can innovate in your infrastructure, allowing you to replicate between different type of hypervisors, uh, make effective use of cloud by migrating to cloud service providers, by migrating to public cloud offerings, or just simply protect into the cloud or from the cloud. Uh, maybe you host applications in the cloud right now. We allow you to actually protect those locally as well. We allow you to quickly consolidate and unify remote sites by using our technology agnostic um, technology. We offer point and click mobility. Four steps to migrate data or applications anywhere in minutes. The applications remain protected and available to users until the need to move. You, uh, the downtime is reduced to only the boot time of VMs because, as you can see, downtime impacted by disruption or unplanned events is something you need to take into account. But also, planned downtime is something that is still causing downtime. So you need to make sure that you need that, that to create that mobility in your environment that really allows you to get this and use this point and click mobility. Because you can, you can test even before you do the migration. Um, we allow you to easily migrate to public or managed cloud just by using the technology and using the steps as provided in our, um, our solution. We give you the innovation with agility. Now if we take a look at organizations, 46% organization, 46 of organizations do not have the right tools in place to conduct QA and testing. So what we do is we give you your developers the gift of agility. We allow you to spin up test and dev environments in minutes. We allow you to use the cloud instead of costly 
data centers that, that have hardware that's constantly up, up and running. And, and we can actually use, instead of managing your own DR site, you can use a public cloud. Instead of only having a DR site, you can now use your DR site at test and dev as well. We give you that flexibility and agility to actually use and deploy newer applications. Um, you can automatically protect them when they go live. You can deploy, develop, protect applications in the cloud, seamless mobility and, and recoverability between on-premises and cloud infrastructures. We really give you the chance to quickly go to market with your applications or with your services when you need to. Now, when looking at more of the automation we offer you the ability with our RESTful API to automate as much as possible. When, get, when, when moving to a digital um, uh, transformation, or when in a digital transformation process, you want to make sure that you can handle quickly, you can scale quickly. We allow you to deploy and upgrade using automation. We allow you to scale and grow using our automation by deploying our virtual replication appliances and our software automatically. We allow you to do automated replication and recovery. And you can really customize the environment to, to fit your needs and to continuously involve your IT infrastructure. Besides that, we offer complete infrastructure visibility. We can report across multi-site, multi-platform environments with, by using consolidated and aggregated data in our, into our SaaS platform. That allows you to analyze protection and consumption um, you can monitor the predicted environment in real time from, from anywhere using our mobile app or our tablet uh, uh, or even our, our HTML5 web-based application. We give you visibility over data location, site topology and application distribution and, and we allow you to view trends and establish workload predictions with historical reporting built in as well. Now with IT resilience we really give you the confidence to embrace change. We offer you a solution, we offer you a platform that allows you to cope with any type of disruption, whether it's ransomware attacks, we allow you to recover to seconds ago, whether it's giving you insight on which application live in, uh, are in what location, what geo even. We give you the flexibility to use to adopt hybrid cloud solutions. We have seamless data and application mobility by not only offering you public cloud, but we have a large cloud service provider network consisting of over 350 um, cloud service providers operating globally. And, and we offer you the possibility to get faster and cheaper test dev environments. All the components that we talked about in, in, in the previous slides, we offer you that in one, one solution. Now, especially for Europe and, and any European um, uh, people watching this webinar right now, GDPR is, is, is looming. And you're required to test and prove fast recovery from an outage. And the only way, the only way to really know how fast you can recover from a disruption is conducting DR testing. And, and all too often this is not done regularly enough or, or even at all. Um, and historically it's been complex and time consuming task which has many organizations not carrying it out re regularly. Um, however, with modern solutions, this is something that can, done, this can be done quick and safely in, in just a minute by a single person. And uh, Zerto allows you to do this. And beyond being it the best practice to do DR testing, it's, it's also required now for regulatory compliance in numerous industries. And modern solutions, again, they should support this requirement by providing the kind of detailed printable report that you can see right here. And this can actually be used to demonstrate an organization's compliance with any type of regulation they're legally obliged to meet. Um, and, and this is actually an example from, from our own product that it shows you when someone performed the failover test and when, uh, from where to where did they go? Did they go from local to on cloud to, to an on-premise or to cloud solutions, cloud service providers, public cloud, and really gives you the detailed steps, including duration and execution time um, of that actual failover test. It's really a powerful tool that you can use to actually prove that you are compliant to those data protection type of regulations. Now, we have a 
huge partner network across the world. We um, are a channel-driven organization. Please contact one of our partners to get a demo. Um, download a trial on our website. Um, you can try it, see the benefits of it, see how we can actually help you support building a resilient platform for your digital transformation. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, please, we have some time available for any questions. Um, if you could please use the question panel in the webinar, then I can definitely see if I can answer those questions for you. Um, I've got a few questions in already. One of them is, will this be viewable later time? Absolutely, this session is being recorded and will be published on our website later on. I will leave the panel open for at least 10 minutes, so you can actually use that time to answer uh, to, to um, ask any questions. In case you have any questions afterwards, please don't hesitate to contact us either through our website or through one of our partners, uh, which can also be found on our website. I've got a question about scalability in terms of um, scalability. How does it scale in terms of numbers or, or volumes of VMs? Um, so what we have, and you can find this in our documentation as well, we have our, our, our scaling guides. Um, any ZVM, which is Zerto Virtual Manager, can replicate and protect up to 5,000 VMs. Um, typically, you see environments with multiple ZVMs, so we can um, definitely support multiple thousands of VMs. So the question I have right now is, is this a hypervisor-specific solution or does it work in conjunction with VM orchestrators like uh, OpenStack, etc.? Um, we are not tied to any type of specific hypervisor. Currently, we support a VMware Hyper-V with vCenter as an orchestration tool, a Hyper-V with SCVMM being um, the orchestration tool. We support public clouds as um, AWS or Microsoft Azure. Uh, also IBM Cloud uh, or one of our 350 plus cloud service providers globally uh, and uh, things like OpenStack are definitely on our roadmap. If you would like anything, any more information about that, please uh, reach out to us and make sure that we can uh, um, give you some more detailed information around that. I would like to thank everyone for their attention. I'm going to close off the session now because there's no more questions. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out to out to us in case you have any questions after this webinar. Thanks again for your attention and uh, hope to see you soon.